Hi friends, I'm back at it again with another instructional video. This will be the third in my How to Play Like series covering the various techniques and stylistic choices of Radiohead's guitarists. I previously made videos for Johnny Greenwood and Tom York, which you should check out in the description. So last, but most certainly not least, I bring you some musings on Mr. Ed O'Brien. Before I begin, I do usually say this at the end, but if you're enjoying my channel, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe, maybe tap the bell if you want to know when more of these videos are coming. One of my favorite things is having discussions with all of you and answering questions through the comments or in premieres, so I'd love for you to join in on the conversation. I should note that I touched briefly on some of Ed's techniques and signature parts in my Radiohead Pedalboards Explored video. My good friend The King of Gear also wrote an excellent article on how Ed crafts ambient sounds, which I have certainly used as an inspiration in that and in this video. Both of those are in the description also, so be sure to check them out. There is so much to say about Ed. I had the absolute pleasure of meeting him after his solo show in New York, right before the world exploded, and he was remarkably generous with his time, passion, and attention with us fans. I believe fully, as others have stated, that he is the secret weapon of the band, a bridge between the different creativities of Tom and Johnny, a true sound designer who knows how to turn pedals into paintbrushes. It's important to note that while almost everyone, including myself, talks about Ed's creative use of guitar effects, at other times throughout Radiohead's discography and career, he's been known to bring the full wallop and attitude of a more conventional rock guitar style. Still, what sets him apart are the rich, ambient-inspired textures that he creates, which fill out the scaffolds that Tom constructs with his songwriting. As I may have left unsaid in my Tom and Johnny videos regarding theory concepts, I am not saying that Ed is strictly calculating when it comes to making sounds. In fact, I'm fairly confident that a lot of his best parts were arrived at through experimentation. Still, understanding why certain choices are impactful or how to achieve similar results is just another tool at a musician's disposal that can make spontaneous improvisation more effective. It's like knowing the building blocks of a language or the basic ingredients of a recipe. Ed spent years experimenting and getting to know the various spices on his shelf, so to speak, and so he knows which ones to grab first to get closer to the sound that he's concocting at any point. In a recent Guitar World interview, Ed stated that the guitar to me is like an oscillator on a synthesizer. It's the start of a sound rather than the sound in itself. And I think that perfectly encapsulates his approach, hence why I've termed this lesson making waves. I'll use this idea as a jumping off point in relating some of the sound examples that I described to their synthesizer counterparts. There are a few key themes that I'll explore in these examples. These include octave and harmony layering, pads and drones, loops and sequences, and the use of smoothed attacks and decays in his sounds. Each of these can be linked to similar techniques in traditional analog, additive, and subtractive synthesis, where the oscillator is the central component. One final note, because Ed's sound is fairly effects heavy, there are obviously certain pieces of gear that he's very strongly associated with, and that could be argued are key to achieving his sound. I'll be using a few of the most iconic ones, like the famous Memory Man Delay, the Digitech Whammy, and the Ebo, but know that the basic principles can be approximated with any number of similar delays, volume pedals, and so on and so forth. Let's walk through each example and talk a little bit about the concepts covered in each. This appropriately dreamy sound is built off of a very basic repeating phrase on the high B and E strings that waltzes alongside Johnny's piano part. Where it gains its weight is through the use of the whammy's octave up harmony, which adds more size and top end sparkle, as well as the medium rate delay repeats that are coming from the memory man, which kind of fill out the sound with their added modulation effect. This is a cool example of a signature Radiohead trick from throughout their discography, which is modulating between major and minor versions of the same chord. You can hear this in the chord sequences from songs ranging from Creep to A Wolf at the Door. In this case, however, Ed is not actually playing the chords that we hear at all, but rather various octaves of a single B note. 
and he's using the harmonizer function of the whammy and taking advantage of the pedal's foot treadle to slide between the major and minor third harmony, which would be impossible to do with normal playing. And this is perhaps the perfect example of the guitar as oscillator concept since he's using the whammy here as an integral part of the sound and not just a master sound effect on top of everything. As the King of Gear points out on his website, Ed originally achieved the dissonant alarm sound from the climax of this song using an Akai Headrush looper and his sustainer equipped Strat to layer drones of three notes, an F, a B, and another F an octave above which form that sinister sounding tritone or diminished fifth relationship. There's also a C note layered in there which is another dissonant interval of a minor second above the B. Here I'm using an e bow instead of a sustainer pickup to get that infinite sustain effect. And what can make these alarm bells truly ring is an added and slowly increasing vibrato from the memory man, as well as a touch of gain or overdrive. Another classic Ed O'Brien looping part, Ed quickly records the small four-note snippet before the start of the song using his Line 6 DL4, and then he re-triggers it manually at both regular and double speed, forward and reverse, at various parts of the song. Ed did similar tricks with the DL4 during live versions of the song Little by Little. He also has the loop feeding through the Memory Man for additional ambience. I'm using the Ditto X4 looper here again, which has the half double speed and reverse capabilities. First, I want to give a shout out to my friend and collaborator Taka, also known as Fluffy Momo, for figuring this one out. This part, which comes from the live arrangement of the song, is an interesting one, and not technically done using a looper, but instead Ed's own picked repetitions of the phrase in a free time space. It's sort of a drone, sort of a sequence, and it sounds kind of ridiculous on its own, but with the right delay effect, it slots nicely behind Johnny's wall of undomo layers and Tom's playful chord strumming. It incorporates elements of the D Dorian mode, which is also G Mixolydian, as well as some chromatic passing tones. This part is adapted from the original 2012 live performances of the song, complete with that very interesting key change from the bridge to the solo. Originally, Ed used his electroharmonics hog, or harmonic octave generator, to get that extra synthy, sustained sound from this part of the song. 
In this example, I'm going to be recreating the violin-like bloom and sustain of the notes with just an increased wet-dry mix on two delay pedals in series, which are bouncing off of each other at slightly different rates to create that pad-like repeat soup. You can further the effects with presses of a volume pedal to get, again, more attack control, but it's not completely necessary. This is another example of where the guitar part is a fairly basic oscillator with its measures of repeating quarter notes, and the effects are what add that special magic. We finish with a very simple and classic use of Ed's swelling sustain approach from the intro to the song All I Need. Ed alternately swells in a C and a G note, the tonic and dominant, and this fifth interval introduces a key motif for the song's Escherian stepped bass line. Again, typically Ed uses his sustainer guitar for this so that he can use his right hand to roll up the volume knob for that swell effect. Here I'm using the E bow and a volume pedal, and I'm sort of kind of imitating that volume ramp that way. That's all for now. Stay tuned for further content on this channel, and be sure to check out thekingofgear.com for more information on Ed and the rest of Radiohead's gear. I'll see you guys all again soon.